railway service. Um, got a few people, with Fiona and, uh, and John Smith from uh, GB Railway, would like to make a few speeches. So, sorry, doing the wrong way. Sorry, That's sorry. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, without any more to do, I'll hand you over to Fiona Taylor, our uh, group director for the uh, Network Rail. Thank you, Graham, and good afternoon. It's lovely to see so many of you here on this beautiful day to recognise Steve's amazing career on the railway. 50 years is just incredible, Steve, so I'm really honoured to be able to, to recognise your contribution this afternoon. And because it's 50 years, I've got quite a long speech. Hey. <laughs> and I couldn't memorise it all, so I will have to read some of this. But um, some of you, not all of you, are old enough to cast your minds back to the year 1972. When the fashion was hot pants, back on shoes and flared trousers. Petrol at that time cost 10 pence a litre for a pound time today. The average house would cost you £6,000 and a brand new car would cost you £1,200. And in 1972, the egg McMuffin was launched. And of course, everybody knows that McDonald's is staple fare in control centres across our neighbourhood. <laughs> And 1972 was the year when Steve's railway <coughs> career began. However, his interest in the railway started at the tender age of just four years old, when, with his parents, he went on a family trip to Bounds Green by train. And following a lovely day out, at the end of the trip, he was told that he would be returning home by bus. Now apparently this resulted in a massive tantrum with Steve <laughs> insisting that he would only ever travel by train and so his love of the railway began. So he joined British Rail on the 22nd of May 1972 at the Liverpool Street Divisional Office dealing with freight guards motor ships and that's where he started to learn and develop his lifelong passion and interest in freight. He then went on to hold a number of other positions, including in the signalling and accident section, the freight operations section, managing the allocation of locomotives and crews, before transferring in 1975 to the Liverpool Street Divisional Control as a locomotive assistant. So you'll hear the word locomotive and freight quite a lot if you go through this. In 1977, he was promoted to milk controller, which I thought maybe was something like a milk monitor at school, but apparently no. <laughs> what that was about was looking after moving milk and perishable goods across the West Country and West Wales into Devon and London. Now, I love this story. One Sunday in 1978, Steve was looking in a system called Tops for two missing milk tank wagons. And he was delighted when he found them on a list that he'd never seen before. So it's in the print button on the top terminal to print off a hard copy of where these wagons had disappeared to. The printer in Paddington Control fired into action. The first list of wagons started to print off, followed by another page, and another page, and another page, and another page, and so on. Sorry, can I just interrupt? I've got that. I've got that. I've Please check before you travel by visiting our website, www.tentingrailway.com. In 79, Steve moved quickly to the divisional 
Command Officers and never thought of him as a Naval Mounted Controller taking this top secret with him. And in 1983, when he was assured that the printer had finally stopped printing, he returned to Paddington and then moved to Swindon in 1984 as a locomotive controller and was responsible for supplying locomotives for passenger trains between Paddington and Penzance and Fishguard and, once again, freight locomotives coal, steel, chemical and oil industry in South Wales and as well as stone from the Somerset quarries. So his first management role was in 1985 when he was promoted to relief manager at Swindon. And a year later the control got its very first computer so that it could record and manage control logs. And again, for those of you that was old as me, you will remember things called typewriters and tipex, and that's what used to produce the reports. A few years later, Steve was promoted to Deputy Chief Controller for the Southeast section of Network Southeast of Waterloo. And he was responsible for the safe and punctual running of services over the Kent and Southeast London routes. Which is, I think, what it says in my title today, funnily enough. <laughs> in 1981, Steve then moved to Friars Bridge Court as Route Control Manager for the Kent route. And that role subsequently moved to the Puddle Dog Office just next to us and was now known as Network Delivery Manager and that's the role from which you've just very, very recently retired. So Steve's railway career has spanned an impressive 50 years and you must have seen extraordinary changes at that time from British Rail to Rail Track, Network Rail and whatever's you know, coming next for us. So I think it's entirely fitting that your service should be recognised by the renaming of this beautiful locomotive in recognition of the esteem, affection and respect which you're regarded across the entire industry. So Steve, the service, commitment and friendship that you've shown to the railway, to freight, to our passengers and to colleagues has been and will always be greatly appreciated. So a massive thank you to you for your service. And we'd like to wish you all the very, very best for a well-earned, long, happy, healthy retirement safe in the knowledge that you will still be running around the network in the shape of this locomotive. <laughs> so, I'd now like to say a warm welcome and a huge thank you to John Smith from GB for your support in making this special day happen. Thank you, John. Over to you. For those that don't know me, John Smith, I uh, run GB Rail Freight for my sins, which is the premier rail freight business <laughs> <laughs> throughout the southern region, um, and I'm sure you will concur with that, uh, Steve. Um, it was a great privilege. I think Henry approached me, Henry Bates approached me originally to say, could we name a loco? And I was told about your career, where you've been, what you had done. It's good to see that you started north of the river. That was reassuring. We are just north of the river here. The railway over this side, for all of you that work here, has three rails, and I've never quite got to grips with how it all works down here. Um, but we have a few coincidences in, in our careers. Um, I spent a long time at Bounds Green, uh, working on HSTs uh, back in the day. I was very uh, proud to, when we started, uh, GB Rail Freight up. It originally spawned itself out of GB Railway, which uh, ran East Anglia. A great place to, to live and grow up in the end. And then losing railway wagons, so shit, <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm pleased to say that still goes on uh, today. And I think even, I, I read somewhere you were involved with incident management, I think on Tuesday this week, sadly we could have done with your help, because uh, we haven't had the best. Um, but without further ado, Steve, honestly, I'd just like to uh, echo Fiona's words, have a great, long, happy retirement. We can now blame you when you break down. <laughs> when, when there are flats on the railhead treatment train, if, if, it's, if it's you, then hopefully, we, uh, where's Henry? We won't get any penalties coming our way. Hopefully we will be forgiven. Um, but real privilege to, to have you here to name it. So I would like you, if you want to say a few words, you can, but if, uh, I'd like you to come up and pull the cord and name it, if you can. Well, I would just like to thank um, all the people who have worked, uh, I've worked with I hear lots of things of people saying how I've uh, given them knowledge, but that knowledge has come from all the people I've worked with, um, and uh, 
just in, inside the office and externally outside the office. And um, um, I'd like to thank Graham, who's uh, been a very, a very good manager to me. I'd like to thank the family, who's had to put up with me getting up at four o'clock in the morning for a, a day shift, but having to keep quiet during the day when I'm on night shift. Uh, it's, it's not been easy. Um, easy for me because uh, it, um, I, it's a way of work, but uh, they've been very good in that respect. So uh, it, it's just, just a case of thanking everyone very much. Um, and um, you know, if, any, if there's any way I can help, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, if you could look at this one just temporarily and then everyone else is after that just 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 for the just for the show. Just squeeze in a little bit. That's it, that's brilliant, brilliant. And in three, two, one. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. That's brilliant. Right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.